it's time for a space race update. We have Starlink beta details, OneWeb is out of bankruptcy, and a lot more. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you a pretty big update on the state of the race to bring mobile broadband internet to everyone from the sky. So we've been tracking a lot of different companies that have ambitions to bring a whole new generation of satellite broadband options to Earth from space. Um, and there's some major news for all of them. Starlink, OneWeb, Amazon's Project Cooper. There's even a whole new player that we're hearing about for the very first time. So let's start with OneWeb. So OneWeb has been around since basically the beginning. We've been tracking them since 2015. Their goal is to build a massive satellite constellation to connect to pretty much everyone on Earth. They had an early head start building the satellites. They built a big factory in Florida. They were on you know, just the beginning of this year, starting their launch campaign to have a monthly launch, 36 satellites per batch. Let's get them up there. And well, then the global COVID-19 pandemic hit, financing dried up, and um, all the heat they were getting from their competitors like uh, SpaceX, which was on an even faster track to launch new satellites, had OneWeb just co-crashing down into bankruptcy in March. And you know, it looked bad. It looked really, really bad for OneWeb because it would take billions of dollars of additional investment to get the system back up and going. They laid everyone off and it was basically just down to a tiny skeleton crew and things were going towards bankruptcy auctions. Um, but, well, there's been an interesting savior and uh, it's it's the Queen of England or Her Majesty's government. The um, and this all actually goes down to Brexit. So because the United Kingdom has left the European Union, um, the United Kingdom has lost access to the European Union's GPS satellites, the Galileo network. They have access to just the consumer level stuff, not the military grade GPS anymore. And as a major world power, wannabe world power, it's kind of embarrassing for the UK to not have GPS. And they've started a huge multi-billion dollar, multi-year project to launch their own GPS satellites. Somebody had the bright idea of like, wait, OneWeb's already got satellites in process of being built. They've already got launch contracts. Maybe we could combine a UK GPS system with OneWeb and piggyback the two together and start from scratch. Everybody wins. The queen gets her GPS. And so that is the deal that has been worked out. The, United, the UK government is going to be investing a substantial amount of money into OneWeb. OneWeb is probably going to be moving their satellite factory, which is already mothballed, restart that in the United Kingdom. And then um, an Indian carrier, Bharti, the third largest uh, mobile carrier in the world, is also investing, um, ideally to get access to OneWeb's back end. So a lot of strange things afoot in OneWeb. Um, they're going to have to redesign the satellites. No idea whether the ones they've already launched are going to be able to work in this network or not. They're going to have to combine GPS functionality with uh, the communication functionalities. Um, so it's a huge delay. They'll probably not start launching again until next year is our guess. But OneWeb is back in the race and has got some deep pockets now. So OneWeb, it's back from the dead. Uh, next up is Amazon's Project Cooper. This is Amazon's... Um, 3,000 satellite mega constellation that has been in the works. We first reported on this last year when Amazon did some preliminary FCC filings. And then for the most part, it had gone pretty silent ever since. They missed a few rounds of deadlines to submit additional FCC paperwork, but it's now clear that they were still working and lobbying behind the scenes because just last week, uh, FCC chairman Ajit Pai uh, tweeted out that he is now in favor of approving Amazon's um, uh, Project Cooper license applications with a few modifications, a few concerns, um, but he's going to be pushing for the full FCC to grant uh, Amazon permission to go forward with this. So we'll probably be hearing a lot more about Cooper in the near future once these legal um, behind the scenes wranglings are handled. And you might be asking, well, why is Amazon wanting to build a, a satellite network of their own? And well, there have been a few quotes from uh, Amazon executives that saying, well, of course, it makes shopping easier and people can reach Alexa from anywhere on earth. So Amazon's got also hugely deep pockets and uh, is putting a lot of money into a big satellite broadband infrastructure network. 
and we will see where this goes. Um, again, Amazon is probably still years, probably several years away from launching, but they're doing all the groundwork now um, and trying to get started. Next up, SpaceX. So SpaceX is already through all that preliminary phase stuff, and they are actively launching their satellites. And in fact, they are just now rolling out the private beta test of Starlink and a few details of this leaked over the past week. So Starlink, for those who haven't been following along, is, is uh, SpaceX's huge um, satellite constellation that's going to be eventually potentially tens of thousands of satellites. Um, they've already got several hundreds in orbit and uh, reaching their final destinations. And the look at last month's video, we've got a big deep dive into Starlink and the trade-offs and all the details of it. But right now, the amount of Starlink satellites they have deployed only gives coverage in the far north of the United States. And that is what has now leaked out of the um, Starlink beta. So the private beta is only being opened at first to people in rural Washington state um, and northern latitudes will probably expand out a bit from there. The private beta is going to last about eight weeks. The selected beta testers are invite only. They've got to sign NDAs um, and you know, they'll be billed just a few dollars for service because they're just testing the billing system. And then at the end of the private beta, they have to send all this back. So Starlink is ramping up to actually have real people, even though there might be just Starlink friends and families on their network to start testing this out. They have set some expectations though. They say that you will need a big wide open clear view of the northern sky to have access to the current satellites. Um, and they're warning people that this is not going to be suitable for gaming or work at first because they're still doing a lot of tweaking on the network. It will be up and down and inconsistently performing. Um, and you know, Hopefully we'll be getting a lot better as the beta feedback comes in. Now, the one concern and question we've got a lot is like, well, just how much clear view of the sky will Starlink need? And from SpaceX's FCC filings, their satellites will need a view as low as 25 degrees above the horizon. That's pretty low. And this is not like satellite TV where you could kind of shoot between the trees and find a little gap. You have to have a clear view towards the whole direction that Starlink is above you. Um, because the satellites will be moving through the sky and if you've got a tree or a building or a mountain peaking up above that 25 foot 25 degree um, horizon line that will be a drop off in service so keep that in mind for starlink the reality of starlink is it's going to need a lot of open sky view and that could be a challenge for mobile users um, until further down the line when as there's more starlink satellites it will eventually be more like a 40 degree view so that's a kind of a Starlink update. Um, and more excitingly, the first official images of the Starlink antenna have been leaked out as well. So we've got, you can see the, the Starlink images here, the antennas are real. People are actually starting to see them in the, in the real world. And Elon Musk has confirmed that yeah, these are the real pictures. Now, um, final, final space update. We've got a, a little bit of news about um, Russia is apparently going to get into this space race as well. They're feeling left out. And we're hearing that in August, Russia is planning to launch plans for their own space broadband constellation. So everybody in the world seems to be wanting to build these massive broadband satellite internet constellations. It will be a big, exciting race to watch. And we will, of course, be covering it all here. Do you like the cool mobile and connected shirts you see us wearing in all our videos? Well, now's your chance to get one. Now, we offered these shirts initially when we launched them over two years ago, and our members have access to them year-round. But in celebration of hitting 30,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, thank you for that. We are offering them in a limited run again, run again this month only. So you can get them on the bottom of every video, or go to mobileinternetinfo.com shirts. Sure. And we appreciate your support of the Resource Center. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.